Well, Kadri, um, one of the guests in Brussels was talking about Muslims speaking out against violence. I know you've spoken out against violence in this kind of attack on many occasions. You also know Belgium very well. But are you concerned about radicalisation or potential radicalisation here in Ireland? Um, well, first of all, uh, let me say that I totally agree with uh, the professor that the problem of extremism and radicalization, it's a multidimensional problem. And we have to be very honest about it. There is a political aspect, there is a social aspect, and there is, of course, a theological aspect. Uh, the political aspect has to be dealt by, by the policy makers, by the politicians. Uh, the social aspect has to be dealt also by the policy makers. Uh, but the theological aspect is an aspect which uh, is religion, that religion is used as a tool to recruit these people. These terrorists, they, they, their motives are political, but they use religion as a tool to recruit youngsters from Europe. Um, and therefore, the Muslim community has been uh, condemning these atrocities, has been disassociating themselves, but at the same time has been within the community working on anti-radicalization programs and trainings to ensure that the Muslim youth cannot be recruited um, and cannot be uh, dis given a distorted, misinterpreted version of their religion because these people, um, they are an extremist minority, but they do have a misinterpre uh, misinterpretation of religion, a distorted view of our religion. And, and the doctrine of jihad, for example, is extremely uh, misunderstood and misinterpreted by them. And as Muslim scholarship and Muslim community, it is our responsibility to ensure that we uh, propagate the true teachings of Islam and, and to put out, have a counter, uh, uh, counter narrative uh, as much as possible. And therefore, last year, uh, the Irish Muslim Peace and Integration Council in this country, we organized a, a protest against ISIS. But at the same time, we have run various different training programs within mosques in Athlone, in Dublin, in Cork, to ensure that the Muslim community knows how how religious text is being misquoted, misunderstood and misinterpreted. But do you have any control or does anybody have any control over somebody who might wish to uh, misinterpret, as you say, uh, that theology? <clears throat> Um, absolutely not, and that is the danger, because uh, three weeks ago there were two uh, preachers that are known to be radical, are known to be hate preachers. Uh, they were coming to Ireland, and we as a Muslim community, we, we were very, very vigilant, and we raised the alarm that we don't want such people to come in the country um, in a platform where they cannot be challenged, because if they come and speak to the Muslim community uh, on a platform where they cannot be challenged, there is a danger that they can influence our community, and the Muslim community in Ireland has been um, a very progressive Aggressive, very well integrated uh, community compared to other Muslim communities in other countries. So there is a danger, and for that, what I what I always say is that we need to learn from the mistakes made by Belgium, France, and Holland. One of those mistakes is that when the Muslim communities came in those countries, like in other, every other community, one of the most important need for a religious community is a place of worship. In Ireland, when Muslims come here, the first thing they do is to try to build and establish a mosque, an Islamic center. Unfortunately, um, there is no umbrella organization, there is no umbrella body of Muslim scholarship or leadership that uh, consists of members of various different denominations that can, for example, approve uh, uh, the, the, such an Islamic center or mosque. Anybody can open a mosque, anybody can open a place of worship, and anybody can any, start teaching. Do you, uh, do you have any concerns about what some people might be taught in those mosques? And those absolutely, centers? absolutely I do, and this is why in November I, last year I said that in Ireland we need such an umbrella body because in certain mosques, now these are obviously not the major biggest mosques, but certain mosques which have come under our attention, uh, we have been informed by Muslim parents, but at the same time by teachers, by teachers from, from nor uh, national schools, Irish teachers, that children, some of them have this very, um, you know, understanding uh, of Islam that is not uh, compatible with the teachings of Islam. For example, that you cannot trust Christians. For example, that you cannot be friends with non-Muslims. And, and that is the danger. These children are getting their education somewhere from. Where are they getting this from? This is the question. Okay, well, Professor Silk, perhaps a, a final question to you. 